Hello, welcome back to my channel. You're watching Prehistoric Companions. My name's Dylan. I want to say thank you so much for stopping by today. Kind of a little more of a bizarre and somewhat sad video. This here is one of the Citrus Pastel 100% Het Pied uh, Royal or Ball Python babies that I had just recently produced. This is my first clutch first time ever breeding reptiles. I had 10 beautiful healthy babies, uh, four pastels, five normals, sorry, six normals, each of them unique in their own way. Each of them has pretty bizarre, wonky, crazy looking patterns. So I have 10 babies, but my female, when she laid eggs, she laid 11 eggs for me. Bation went fairly well. I'll have to post cards up in the corner so that you can go check out the uh, process from setting up the egg box to cutting the eggs and revealing the gender and the whole process, what we got here. So I said I had 11 eggs and only 10 babies, so that means unfortunately one of them did not make it. These guys were born the last day of April and the first day of May. And the day that I checked on them, after all the babies had come out of the eggs, they all pipped, they all emerged. There was one pastel baby that wasn't, I think, really quite ready yet. It still had a lot of yolk to develop, and it was somewhat out of the egg. And in the morning, all the other babies were piled on top of it, so I think it just got smothered, and it was premature, and... It sucks, you know, so I guess this is just what happens when you are working with animals and especially breeding, so especially with babies, they're so delicate and fragile and you just don't know what might happen. So it's very unfortunate, but I came across some videos on YouTube of, uh, there was one in particular, Brian Barczyk had got a two-headed bearded dragon and unfortunately with two-headed animals, a lot of the time, they just don't make it. And that was the case with this bearded dragon. Brian Barczyk's two-headed bearded dragon didn't make it, unfortunately. So he turned it into a wet specimen, and that's what I'm going to do today with the pastel baby ball python that I had that didn't make it. We're going to set up a little station. We're going to go through the process. This is the first time I've done this, so I don't even know if I'm doing it all totally correctly, but this is how I'm going to do it. If you find yourself in a similar situation and want to find an interesting way to preserve a specimen, then this is how I'm going to conduct the process and the materials I'm using today. So let's go ahead and put you away and we'll go ahead and get started here. Here I have my station laid out. I just have simple paper towel. Uh, I found this nice jar at Hobby Lobby that I think will be perfect to uh, contain this specimen. Gloves, I have a syringe and a uh, sanitized needle here. 91% isopropyl alcohol, and then my formaldehyde, my formalin. So I'm going to unwrap, unpackage this, this needle, get this all assembled, um, get just a little bit, fill, I probably don't really honestly need more than probably maybe two of these little cups to inject. I'm going to fill this up with the formalin and uh, fill up the syringe with the formalin and then inject in various locations around the body uh, really get as much that formalin all distributed inside the animal as much as possible and then once that process is over uh, I'll put the animal soak it for probably for 24 hours in a little bit of formalin replace that formalin with the isopropyl alcohol and that'll complete the process so this is the part I'm dreading just something about like poking the needle in, in this just little baby it just sucks you know just I, don't get me wrong, I am so happy and glad that I have 10 just beautiful, healthy babies, but, you know, it just sucks that this one didn't make it. It just it crushed me that when I, or when I found it that morning, so I guess that's just sometimes I guess it's what I have to confront uh, if I continue down this path with breeding animals, and, you know, I'm just probably going to run into these things, unfortunately, so I'm just prolonging the inevitable, so let's go ahead and get right into it.
so this baby's been sitting in this jar, soaking in the formalin for about a week and a half now. Its body should be pretty firm. It's sunk to the bottom of this jar. Now we just need to take the formalin out. I'm gonna take the formalin out, primarily using this syringe. I'm gonna take the used formalin and put it in this clean old pickle jar. That way I can use it for future projects. I have distilled water here. I'm going to use this distilled water to put in another individual glass bowl. I'm gonna clean off the uh, specimen in here, put the specimen in the bowl with the distilled water, clean any debris, because there's lots of floaties and nasties and things in here, so I want that thing really clean. That way, whenever I add my 70% isopropyl alcohol to the final product. It'll be crystal clear and no issues. You, you can very visibly view the animal inside the jar. And then last, I'm gonna use some silicone here. I'm gonna put a bead on the inside of this jar here and then seal that, that way uh, it doesn't leak. This, this jar seems to, the lid seems to leak quite a bit, so I'm gonna silicone that, waterproof it, and then that'll permanently seal it and we'll call it Dunzo. it this is our finished wet specimen all sealed that's the process so this makes good additions if you have like a private at home library or I'm an educator fifth grade science teacher so this will be an interesting specimen to have in the classroom to perform analysis it is unfortunate that this little baby didn't make it but nonetheless she will be forever preserved in this jar and I can look at her every day and this will serve as a constant reminder of what it takes to bring new life into this world, breeding reptiles. So if you're watching today's video and you have a wet specimen, post a picture in the comment section down below. I'd love to see the project that you guys have created. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope you guys found that uh, interesting, kind of gross, but now I think it's a cool educational piece that I could probably leave in my classroom or just always a good keepsake. But now it's a good uh, conversation starter or a good educational piece. I'm a fifth grade science teacher in training, but also a good keepsake, you know, just something for me to remind myself my first time breeding ball pythons, you know, the whole experience of the, of the feelings, things, the emotions that was running through me, but also maybe as a reminder of maybe uh, to let nature run its course, to be patient, to let things work themselves out. So again, you're watching Prehistoric Companions. If you think that my videos deserve a like, do me a huge favor, hit the like button. If you think my content is interesting and a friend might be interested, uh, do me a huge favor, share my videos. And last, if you haven't already, please do me a favor and hit the subscription button so you could stay up to date with all my content. Also hit the all notifications bell so that you know every time I post a brand new video. So be safe out there in this crazy world of ours. I hope to see you in the next episode. And with that being said, we'll see you later.